this is the Provoke Prawn, and this is the most exciting keyboard that Razer's done recently, the Razer Deathstalker V2 Pro. This is a flagship keyboard from Razer, a wireless one with Bluetooth and 2.4 GHz wireless, and a number of really interesting features, including low-profile optical switches, available in two different variants, linear and clicky. Now, this is one of several keyboards in the Deathstalker V2 range. This is the full-size V2 Pro, there's also going to be a 10 keyless variant of this at the near future and a wired version in the form of the Deathstalker V2, which is the more affordable. But this is the flagship and the most expensive out of the lineup, coming in at around £249 sterling or dollars and equivalent in euros as well. So very expensive, but also quite interesting for a number of different reasons. Optical switches, for example, both Bluetooth and 2.4 GHz wireless for Razer's hyperspeed technology, and as you can see, a low profile style. Now, this is very similar to Logitech's G915, and that's a reason to get excited in the first place. I'm a big fan of the G915 TKL, and I'm going to do a comparison video with this large one and the full size G915 in the near future. I want to talk about what's interesting about this Razer keyboard and what it's like to use and the number of different highlights about it. As you can see, a very low profile style to it and yet it has some nice RGB lighting with laser etched keycaps delivering some good shine through. Also, they've designed it so that the secondary layer of lettering is also on the same row so that basically the lighting shines through really nicely. On the underside, you'll find there's some flip-up feet and a little bulge where the battery is stored. And there's also a port for the USB dongle when that's not in use. Now, this is quite a chunky bulge with the battery. But the reason for that is they wanted to put a big one in there so it would have a decent amount of battery life. The claim is 10 days of battery life based on four hours of usage, uh, around 50% brightness. So it's going to vary depending on how much RGB you have turned on. Now this doesn't sound like a terrible amount because it basically it's 40 hours, which is not masses. But the reason for that is this uses optical switches, which means that you have a light beam through each of the switches individually that is then used to break the light beam when you press the key switch in order to register the press. So obviously that requires some amount of power and also so does the RGB lighting. In the box you get a USB-C cable, a little extender adapter, and obviously the dongle, so you can plug the dongle into your PC or you can plug it into this extender and put it near your keyboard if you want to and then have the ability to easily disconnect that cable and plug it in when you need to charge. It's also worth noting there is a button press that you can press so you can see the battery life on the fly so you get an idea of how much juice you have in there. So if you press the function key and the end key together you'll get a little highlight of that which is quite neat. Now, I don't really like the storage dock on the underside for the dongle. I do think that's a bit fiddly and cheap feeling. Takes away from the overall aesthetic of it. They could have just made a little port for it, which I've seen on a lot of other keyboards. But that's one small complaint over what is otherwise a wonderful keyboard for a number of different reasons. I'm a real big fan of this low profile setup and it does have a really nice quality to it. As you can see, laser etched keycaps with this ultra durable coating on top. And in my experience so far, I've not noticed any sort of marring or it doesn't seem to be picking up any oils or fingerprint marks from it. So it's quite impressive in that way. How that holds up over time will remain to be seen. I've seen the G915, for example, picks up quite a bit of oils over time and it starts to look a bit dated and not so nice. You'll notice some other things of interest here as well. It has a durable aluminium top plate and it also has a media playback and control dial on the right hand side. Both the wheel and the button next to it are dual action as well, so you have multiple actions in there. You can adjust the RGB lighting. You also have macro recording and a gaming mode as well that you can see buried in the function keys. So there's a lot going on here and an interesting setup in a number of different ways. So you can see, quickly see that if you press the function key and the end key, you'll notice that the little lights down where you'd see like the scroll lock and caps lock light indicator light up to show you just how much of a gauge of the battery life you've got left. A nice little touch and a good addition. Also, I'm impressed by the RGB lighting. As you can see from multiple different angles, it shines through nicely. And you can see that both during the day and night. Obviously, the brighter you have it, the less battery life you're going to get. So it's a bit of a trade-off. 
whether you actually use it or dim it right down to make the most of battery life. But it is pretty nice looking. And it's also interesting that the 10 keyless model will squeeze out more battery. They claim 12 days of battery instead of 10 on that one. So if you're looking at the compact one, which will be available shortly after this one launches, then that will last longer. And frankly, I'd like to see the 10 keyless model because I'm a big fan of 10 keyless. It's just the right size. I don't really need a numpad. And so this thing takes up quite a bit more room on the desk. But if you're into full size keyboards, then you'll probably thoroughly enjoy this one. It sits really low and I can't overstate low profile design. I think it's very comfortable to use all day for typing and then for gaming on as well. As you can see at the rear, you have the USB port and also three buttons, which allow you to change between three different Bluetooth profiles. So you can connect up to three different devices and then switch between them on the easily. And you can also switch the Bluetooth on and off and vice versa. Now, if you pick off the keycaps, you get a look at the sort of standard Cherry MX fit there. So obviously the keycaps are removable and you can see that, as I said, laser etched and they have this interesting coating on them. It doesn't feel rubberized or anything. It certainly isn't PBT double shot on the other side of it though. So interesting mix of a good balance in the way they're designed. You'll notice there's a nice bit of a curvature to them and I actually found them really comfortable. Now they are supported, the larger keys, with some stabilizers on either side. And again, you have that crosshatch Cherry MX style top to them. Essentially means the reduces the wobble in it. And I'm actually happy to report that I really like the setup of these keycaps. They don't wobble around too much when you're using them. And I've actually found them very good. Now, as I said, these are the linear optical switches. You can get linear and clicky, although the clicky are coming later. But the linear ones are designed to be fast uh, to actuate and to give you good results. Now they're guaranteed up to 70 million clicks and this is a point of interest is that uh, the standard optical switches from Razer are usually guaranteed up to 100 million so these low profile ones won't last quite as long. As you can see there's very little wobble in the keycaps and the stabilizers as well so I actually found really comfortable and pleasant typing experience. These key switches actuate at 1.2 millimeters and then a full travel of 2.8. Essentially, that means you really need a feather light touch in order to get them to activate and very little force at 45 grams as well. So really comfortable and speedy and satisfying. They strike a really good balance in my mind of giving you a response where you can actually hear them clicking, but also not being too obnoxious. So Razor's done a really good job of a nice, comfortable, reasonably quiet, pleasant typing experience. If you prefer a louder typing experience, obviously the clicky ones are an option. Those actuate at 1.5 mil though, so they require a bit more pressure, but obviously slightly different setup there. Unfortunately, I can't show that because they're not available at this point, but something to consider. So you have two different options. It also depends on what keyboard you're purchasing. For example, the 10 keyless won't come with clickies, so it's just worth bearing that in mind. It's worth noting that although you can remove the keycaps, you can't really purchase aftermarket low profile keycaps in my experience. So you will have to part with these. You will find that there are very few options when it comes to aftermarket low profiles. So you are kind of stuck with this. However, I think it's worth the trade off. I have been a big fan of Logitech G915 TKL for a long time because of the low profile design. Having it sit really low to the desk makes it a lot more comfortable. You're not bending your wrist as much. And I think I can't overstate how much I like that. I've tried a lot of different keyboards and you can see my favorite keyboard here alongside the Razer Deathstalker V2 Pro. I wanted to show you the difference in the key switches quickly. You can see the Logitech one has this interesting setup with the two prong basically key cap design instead. And then it has metal prongs on either side of the stabilizers. I actually find that the Razer key switches don't wobble around as much as the Logitech, although you've got the metal stabilizers on there. I do find that there's a bit more wobble in the Logitech keyboard than there is in the Razer one. So I actually prefer the setup of the Razer keycaps. And I really didn't think I'd be saying that because I've loved the G915 for a long time. And now I'm actually thinking that the Deathstalker V2 might be my favorite keyboard, although I definitely prefer the white look than the black one. <laughs> That's a personal preference. However, it is worth noting that the G915 TKL has a lot more battery life, significantly more, but then that doesn't use optical switches. So there's the trade off there between those two. And it's worth keeping that in mind that the battery life might not sound that great on the Razer keyboard, but it is 
because it has fancier switches that will react more quickly, more accurately, and in theory should last longer over time with a much more durable setup. So you can see there's quite a few things of interest going on with this keyboard and a nice looking aesthetic to it as well. I think it's a really nice looking keyboard and nice few hidden highlights in there. So as I said, the media playback volume wheel, for example, at the top, as volume up and down is standard, you can push it in to mute the button next to it. You push that once to play, you push it twice to skip, you push it three times to rewind to a previous track. So there's multiple buttons in here that aren't immediately obvious. So all told, a fantastic keyboard with a number of great highlights. Stick around now to hear a sound test of the key switches and come back to see a comparison with the G915 in the near future.